I think the iPad has the potential to be very disruptive. And as soon as it came out, I waited until the 3G model came out because my feeling was that that's the enabler. That's the that's what makes the device so powerful is the ability to be portable. And uh, so far, it's been fantastic, especially on traveling. But recently, um, I've actually had an injury, and one of the things I found that's so wonderful about the device is the ability to use it when you're in bed. So, uh, um, you know, it's interesting. I find all kinds of, of new ways to use the device, and I think that if they can capture the imagination of users and not try to pigeonhole the device into being what they perceive from the old paradigm as it being, I think that this could be a very disruptive device, and especially for journalism. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. I just I like to use the the pasteboard up here just to just to illustrate the stuff when we're talking about it. So I'm sorry if that if, if it does get annoying or or, or uh, uh, distracting, just tell me and I'll cut it out. But so why don't we uh, start from the top? Uh, Anne Marie uh, McReynolds, I think that's alphabetical. Yeah, um, Anne Marie, tell us about yourself and, and what you hope to get out of the course. Um, my name's Anne Marie, and um, like Steve, my background is uh, photojournalism. I was a photojournalist at the San Jose Mercury News for over five and a half years before going to the LA Times. Um, I actually don't have a degree in journalism. I went to Stanford and did something uh, completely uh, different and heavy that um, it turned out photography was my ethnographic research method. Um, and cognitive psych and, and so forth. So um, I did an individually designed major and I'm second year, hopefully graduating um, student in this program looking towards um, the coding program at Northwestern for uh, this type of uh, application development. How about Callie? Okay. Uh, like I said, I live in Santa Barbara and I uh, work with the archives at the California Ethnic and Multicultural Archives and a good part of my job is image management. I uh, uh, work with Calispear on the California Digital Library and uh, we, we have a lot of graphics that, I, that publishers are requesting and I have to deal with that and I've been doing streaming uh, videos online and so people will ask for video clips and I'm having to work with the uh, performing arts uh, director with that kind of thing. And uh, in addition, I really enjoy book photography and I've been cataloging and playing around with the different online, not online catalogs, but different photo catalogs for a number of years. I'm using the Aperture catalog now. I uh, have been using my own web page kind of as a playground and tweaking and playing around with things. And like I said earlier, it's fun for me to look at other people's photographs, but I, I enjoy checking out what my web page looks like on the iPod and you know what my pictures look like, little and big, and just that real crisp picture is a, a real pleasure. Anyway, that's kind of what I uh, enjoy. Callie, what's your web address? It's, uh, I'll type it in, it's www.callybowdish.com. So I wanted to say one other thing that I'm really interested in is how to defuse the fear that's going on in the libraries right now with people being afraid that with the new thrust and the, and the budget cuts that uh, all the digital electronic and uh, kind of things going digital is going to freeze out people that have been working in the libraries and libraries in general and I think it would be really nice to have some uh, ways to feel people feel like they can still be in the sunshine rather than been frozen out when it comes to what's happening with the libraries including the big research libraries. Yeah, it makes me think we should do a uh, like a whiteboard exercise when we're done with the introductions and talk about the specific details that you guys want to cover so we can make sure we get into that stuff. How about Kent? 
Hello, uh, my name is Ken Conrad, as it uh, says up on the board. I Right now I work in closed captioning and subtitles. I got a degree from USC Film School in 2001 in film production, and so I've been working in post-production for the last decade, and as I said, closed captioning and subtitles. And while I was working at one of those companies, I developed a database system in Ruby on Rails for, to take care of our orders. And that, that's kind of pushed me in more of an information science oriented direction. That's where my interests are. And with the, I have an iPod Touch, uh, so that's a, I don't have an iPad because I, I've had some minor bad experiences with uh, first generation Apple technology. I have a MacBook Pro that the speakers broke uh, within a few weeks. It's, uh, it, it yells at me every, f every few minutes that there's some USB overload. Yeah, yeah. So there's a. So I, I'm waiting for the second generation, just to, just in case. And, and l luckily, that it corresponded to me not having enough money to get one at the time when the iPad came out. But I, one of the things I'm really, really super interested in is um, the iPad in relation to eBooks. I have a Kindle, which I, I love dearly, but I also use the Kindle app on my iPod Touch, and uh, it seems to me that that's inevitably the direction that a lot of publishing is going to be going into. And I'm interested on, in that on a number of levels. Uh, I, as a, as a consumer, as a writer, um, just recently Dorchester Publishing, which was a big publisher, has said they're not public, they're a big mass market paperback publisher. And they said, we aren't, uh, as of September, we're no longer doing mass market uh, paperbacks. We're going strictly ebooks except for our best sellers. So it looks like that's the future to me and that's uh, what I really want to learn about. By the way, uh, probably about 40%, half, a third to a half of everyone in the, in the course does not have an iPad. So uh, most of us do, I think, but uh, uh, a, a real sizable minority doesn't. And that's okay. We, we've got the tools necessary to, to work through that. If I can, can answer uh, Paul's question real quick. Uh, I, I love e-ink. I have the first generation Kindle. So the... Um, so it's not as high resolution as I think these the second or third generation Kindles, but there, there's a lot of convenience that comes with the LCD screen, and uh, I, I don't find I get a lot of eye strain reading on the iPod Touch, though the Kindle is is a better experience for me. How about Luann? Sorry, Luanna. It's Luanna, um, and I live in Utah, Salt Lake City area and I'm a professional genealogist um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how we can work with um, using the technology within the special libraries. Um, the Family History Library here is, is going high tech. They've been digitizing a lot of their um, microfilms and allowing that for the public. I've been involved in indexing on that and, and a lot of that um, technology and they have a technology conference coming up called Digital Roots 2011 where they're going to take the um, people that develop these applications, those who use them and um, in the genealogy community and um, try to get everybody together to um, collaborate and see what we can come up with. And so I'm really interested in using the iPad. In fact, I'm going to propose a class, hopefully, a lecture on using the iPad in genealogical applications. And I'm just real excited to use it. I've had so much fun playing with it since July when I bought mine. But um, I'm not in a normal library. I don't work at the Family History Library. I'm a professional genealogist and am in the archives track. So that's me. Are you proposing that you, that you uh, uh, deliver the, uh, the lecture? Or do you want to have one uh, created? Oh, either way, I guess. I would love to do that. Um, I've done a lot of the lectures and technology-wise. I do a, a lecture. In fact, I did a national conference on voice recognition software and genealogy. I worked with Nuance Nair Dragon Naturally Speaking for probably four years now. And um, I, I would love to learn enough to get, give the genealogical community a, a basic idea of how an iPad could be used. I actually used my iPad in my uh, presentations this summer at a uh, genealogical conference down at uh, Brigham Young University, and it worked wonderful on Keynote. I was really scared because I haven't used Apple since they first came out. 
Um, and so I have a PC, but it was wonderful. It worked great, and, and I can see its applications. Well, I'd, I'd take you up on that. Let, let's see how we can work that in. Can I comment here on, on, the, con on the idea of doing uh, genealogies? I think that this is an excellent tool for this because it gives you the power of the web and the ability to save the information in a format that can be shared and distributed and indeed archived. And I think that's one of the things that you can do in, um, in EPUB. Um, I am looking forward to um, using Legacy um, is a genealogical database, and they just came out with um, Families, which takes that genealogical information off of the Legacy database, kind of shares with it. And now I can go anywhere with that information, um, scaled in either pedigree or, or in the family group sheets, and take it with me as I go. That just came out last week. And so I'm seeing how some of these companies are starting to develop things, and I'd like to um, see what else we can accomplish in that area. Okay, thank you very much. How about Paul? Hi, um, my name is Paul Sitko, and I uh, this is my third and final year in the program. I, I work uh, full time at the University of Southern California in the libraries there, and I do um, a systems administration and and uh, and programming, primarily uh, Java programming, some Perl stuff. Um, I also do uh, customization work on our. OPAC and have done work with uh, developing our digital library, um, which I'm just put in the URL for there. That's uh, we've got a lot of uh, of uh, photo collections and stuff uh, from our special collections exposed uh, digitally, and that's one of the things one of the things that we're looking at is how to uh, make this stuff um, available and more friendly for devices like iPhones, iPads, uh, and Android devices. So that's kind of my primary interest. In the uh, in the class, I'm I'm I've been uh, just starting to uh, self-teach myself uh, uh, app development on the Android platform since my background is uh, in Java to some extent. But I am interested in uh, taking a look at some of the Apple technologies as well. That's great. How about Robert? Uh, let me know if everyone can hear me okay. Um, but basically, um, I have a degree in computer science um, from DePaul University. Um, right now, I'm living in Santa Cruz, and I'm, I'm actually working for the San Jose Public Library. Um, I'm a graduate assistant there working on the website, and I'm also uh, I'm also uh, Linda Professor um, Linda Maines, graduate assistant as well, um, doing random technology projects. Um, I am interested in the iPad kind of because um, of my development background, just um, kind of as a development platform. Um, the Apple people actually came to the San Jose Public Library to talk to the staff about the iPad. Um, I kind of missed most of the presentation, unfortunately, because I was late. But I remember I caught the end of it. They were talking about um, different issues as far as like um, the iPad not supporting particular. Um, you know what? I don't think they did. He, I think he, he just had uh, PowerPoint slides. Um, but it was pretty interesting. He was, an, he was a pretty interesting guy. I forget his name, but I think I might have the URL of his site somewhere. But I think the the big discussion, yeah, is basically. Um, format discussion at the end is what I caught, and it, I don't think it was heated, but there was definitely a disagreement as far as like what Apple should support versus what they think is technologically feasible. Um, but again, I didn't really catch too much of that discussion. But that's pretty much my interest with um, the iPad. Okay, great. How about Silka? Hey everyone, um, from what I've heard so far, I'm probably the least of all the experts that are there. I'm coming to this class out of pure and unabashed adoration and enthusiasm for Apple. 
Um, I have an undergrad degree from San Jose State in anthropology, physical anthropology at that, so basically the boat lady. And um, then I entered the program of library science with the goal of becoming an archivist. So I am on the archivist track. I am currently working at the King Library for both special collections as a student assistant as well as the Stuart Zoo Academy, which is also lo um, located inside the Fifth Floor Special Collections area. I never thought I would um, do anything but push the buttons and click the mouse on all the gadgets that I love so much until I was confronted with EAD, that's archival encoding in XML. And once I realized I can actually do this and I love doing it, that's when I said, okay, the second part of my library science program is all going to be about technology. And then I saw um, the iPad class and said, I don't care. I don't have any backgrounds. I don't have any experience. I'm going to do this. Because I'm the one who actually was one of those standing in line the very first day for the very, very first iPhone. I've had everyone since. And I just two days ago got my iPhone 4 in the mail. Unbelievable. I do not have an iPad for the simple reason that I think it's a little bit big, a little bit bulky. And I'm hedging my bets for the rumor that there is going to be a smaller model, maybe coming out in January, maybe going to be announced at September 1st for the special Apple event. So yeah, that's the only reason. Otherwise, I would have one. And I really, really envy all of you who do have one. So that's all about me for now. OK, I want to take this opportunity, um, since we have some of the school's top experts here, uh, on a bunch of different sort of perspectives on the, on the, on the item. It's really interesting. Can we you do a little uh, whiteboard exercise and talk about what you want to know in the class? Um, what are the topics that you want to cover um, using the drawing tools in the top, in the top left? So yeah, that's come up a couple of times here. It looks like the App Store distribution model, um, more back-end uh, mashup and connectivity issues like uh, databases and I added accessibility and security just to get the ball rolling. 
Okay. Does anyone want to um, clarify any of this? Like, um, uh, we got email on this. I got email on this a couple, well, a month or so back from on uh, Flash versus HTML5. Do you want to uh, do you want to clarify on that? Well, I'm interested in the, in the pros and cons of, of both uh, of both platforms, and uh, and maybe looking at a little bit more at what uh, just delving into why Apple is not supporting Flash on the iPad platform. Okay, um, Steve, do you have anything else you wanted to say before we? Yeah, those are connected, aren't they? Before we um, get uh, deeper into the syllabus, I just basically I was surprised uh, at some of the things that that came up. Of course, I didn't realize that you threw security out there, and that was interesting. Um, now I don't know did uh, the, the color change. Does that mean somebody else was highlighting it and second, seconding the motion? Because uh, yeah, I think that's an interesting topic. Yeah, I was just playing around. I, I changed the color and uh, moved it around. Okay, uh, I'll just uh, breeze through these things real quick. It sounds like um, we are skewing. It's not. It doesn't really mean anything, but we're skewing male uh, at, compared to the rest of the SLIS. SLIS is 85% female. Um, I'm curious if you guys want to mark. Uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse's new. Hi, Jesse. If you want to mark the particular interesting, uh, uh, interesting thing that you are, want to do in SLIS, this is a survey uh, I did of our incoming students um, over the last uh, year and a half. So, if you want to use the pen tools and just mark the the interest that you have in in the program. Yeah, I think this kind of came out in, in our introductions. But uh, Jesse, do you want to um, say hello to the uh, to the class? Also, I was really interested when I surveyed the uh, SLIS that um, most people did not add content to websites like uh, Flickr, Wikipedia, or blogging. Um, and most people did not do um, live communication uh, often on the web. And uh, this one's suspect, actually, the very first one, socialize with peers. Um, most people did not do that. So I'm curious if you guys uh, mark out, um, put some marks here under these these three columns about. Um, so if you mark. Here it means you do it a lot, and if you mark here, it means you don't do it very much at all down at the bottom. Yeah, so it looks like you guys are, are very social online, and you do a lot of content creation online as well, and uh, less maybe maybe less uh, adamantly doing the live inter internet uh, communication, the real time stuff. Go ahead and nominate one, Henry. Sounds great. So yeah, if you do put anything up in a public venue or in a social uh, network venue, 
uh, go ahead and uh, hashtag it, pound, uh, well, hash iPad 287. Thanks, Emory. So um, now kind of the, the drier stuff. Um, this is uh, the 287 course. It's a fall uh, course two credit. And I think I had messed up the survey. You saw the survey link down there at the very bottom. Um, I'd messed it up. If you want to go in there and fill in that survey, that would be helpful. We'll get some times when people are, are more uh, likely to be able to attend uh, optional things. Um, the book for the course is the Stark book. Does everybody have, does anyone not have the Stark book? Or I'm curious, how many, how many of you are working only digitally with the Stark book? Yeah, I have a paper copy, and I think Steve has the uh, Steve has the uh, the ebook uh, version from O'Reilly. Now, y'all should know. You probably all know that we have ebook. Uh, well, we have um, online book privileges for Safari, Safari book privileges through the library. You probably all know that that you can go in there and look at, at most of the books. Um, the uh, the wonderful uh, the animal books from O'Reilly. I'm telling you, it's it's not as uh, nice as the as the EPUB that you get from them. That's for sure. Or the uh, the PDFs. I uh, uh, got uh, I bought some PDF chapters. Those were nice. It has very light DRM from what I can see. Uh, digital rights management. I was not able to um, take my three chapters and combine them into one uh, PDF. Uh, it wouldn't let me do that. So I'm not sure about multiple. Uh, I'm not sure about multiple um, devices. Do you know, Steve? I haven't actually looked at the PDF because, you know, for what I'm doing, PDF doesn't interest me that much. Um, but I was able to totally hack into uh, the EPUB um, eBooks uh, using Siegel, and it's a very great way to see how a professional company uses uh, EPUB. So this is the course description. It's sort of everything in the kitchen sink. Um, you know, we wrote, we, I wrote this, uh, described the course before we even really knew what they were like. Um, but um, I think there's a lot of interesting things here. I'm curious if you all um, use the drawing tools and highlight the things that in this particular description that you think would be interesting and you want to focus on. So uh, looks like by far the most popular thing is uh, developing web pages and interactive applications, uh, followed closely by digital collections, ebook trend digital collections. Yeah, who wrote is is Flash the end of life? You want to um, 
clarify or, or uh, put some more uh, thought on that? Yeah, actually, I put that up there. I was uh, putting around with my uh, um, tablet. But, uh, no, I mean, it's been brought up a couple of times uh, what's going to happen with Flash. And, uh, you know, when you look at HTML5 and, and where that is all going uh, and, and the evolution of HTML, um, is Flash a relevant technology for the future? That's all. Sorry, I'm being so awkward here. So you've all taken 202. I'm curious how many of you have taken 240, uh, any of the web coding courses? So it looks like about, about half, five of you, six of you. And you all have access to um, uh, OS X or the iPad itself? Uh oh, Robert, what's up? Uh, I guess I don't personally have access to um, um, uh, any any Mac platforms, but then I just realized I I kind of I actually do have access. I at least that was my thinking, but then I realized I, I kind of do have access to a Mac Mini, um, but other because otherwise my personal computers are a Windows a Windows Seven machine, and um, do you have an iPad? I do not. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we need to look at that. Yeah, I, I think I actually, I, I had also emailed you, I, I responded briefly about there's a, I know there's a simulator online, um, and I, I had looked a little bit into maybe trying to get that to work with Windows, and there are some resources for that, but I need to dig a little bit deeper into that, so maybe I should look at that pretty soon. Okay, we're definitely going to be doing a lot of screen capturing, a lot of sharing visual work. Um, and you're going to uh, poke and prod at this thing and talk about its strengths and weaknesses quite a bit. Um, you're going to look at literature. There's not a whole lot out there uh, for the newest stuff. but And you're going to be uh, formatting existing websites uh, for optimal viewing on the device and also creating uh, EPUB documents. So the, the SLIS core competencies that, that work with, these are, you probably have all got a lot of evidence toward your ePortfolio toward these uh, competencies, but um, designing and uh, um, commu uh, current uh, communication technologies and understanding um, uh, the control and creation of information structures. These are the, these are the, the uh, usual suspects for any kind of technical course. So um, yeah, like I said, please fill out that survey if you haven't. And I apologize, I, I had not edited the survey properly to add the option of the iPad course. Um, there's a one required text. You, obviously, you all have microphone headsets. You don't need to apply for the, uh, the developer program. Um, we can get you in that system. Right now, we actually don't have anything um, scheduled in the course that requires that. Um, you can actually get access to the simulator without um, being in the paid developer program. But if anybody's interested in doing that, I can send, we can send off your name and get you in. Uh, you don't need the, 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 the wired connectivity, the wireless connectivity for the iPad, and you don't need a large one either. So one of you uh, emailed about how big do you need, and the smallest is fine. We also have web server space here on uh, in SLIS on the Sienna, the Sienna um, web server. Or you can use your own. So either way. How many of you are, have access to some sort of web server where you can put up uh, simple web pages? 
how many of you need uh, new accounts this term for web access? Okay, Jesse and Luana. Okay. Yes, Silka, that should be fine. That should be fine. As long as you can serve up a web page, uh, you're good. Okay, um, this is a two credit course and it's covering uh, too much. <laughs> There's a whole lot in here. So we want to make sure to be rigorous but also to allow you a little bit of flexibility to look at the areas you're interested in. The papers are small. Um, the very, there's two papers in the course. Um, I'm doing one, Steve's doing one. Uh, there are four or five page papers. I'm doing an annotated bibliography and the description of that uh, paper, uh, pretty, pretty well detailed description of that paper is available in the uh, course uh, shell now. Um, I'm asking you in my paper to um, prepare an annotated bibliography summarizing uh, and evaluating five key pieces of literature about the iPad. By literature, I mean uh, writing. And uh, there should be a variety from a variety of uh, different uh, uh, types of resources. And um, so you can pick any topic you would like to. So this is five interesting uh, uh, resources on a topic of your choice having to do with the iPad. So things like uh, genealogy be a great one. Um, image collections, be perfect. Um, journalism, these are all excellent. Um, so this gives you freedom and flexibility uh, to do, you know, 7,000 word usability, perfect, um, specifically on these platforms. So try to find a variety of sources, uh, the library, trade press, newspaper articles, radio stories, videos, I love all that stuff. Um, use APA format, I'm not terribly strict, um, um, you know, as long as it's useful, that's the important thing. I did find a couple of resources uh, here to help you uh, format uh, uh, an annotated bibliography. And so that's a, a pretty, pretty uh, quick and easy uh, project. It's really to, to get your feet wet and to have you taking a look at some implications for the, uh, uh, the iPad. That paper is due on September the 15th. So um, the second paper, and each one of those is worth 15 points. Uh, Steve's paper is due on the 13th of October. We'll go over the schedule in a bit here. So those are the papers. Um, Steve, did you want to add anything about uh, the paper? So what I'm going to have you do, because I really think you guys are, are teaching the class right along with us, is to post these to the discussion boards. So you're going to be posting to the forum. Um, I'll put up a, a forum and you can post the papers. So you guys are going to be posting these papers and commenting as well. Uh, so the more interaction and the more um, cross-pollination between all of you and all these different disciplines is better. Yeah, this is going to be a great class. So, um, Steve. I see uh, you're typing now. Did you want to say anything about the paper? Yeah, sorry about that. I had a technical problem here just when I was about to talk. And um, now basically what I'm doing in the paper is I want to kind of get your ideas of uh, where this technology is going. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, of course, the stuff that's out there. But also, um, I want to kind of get your um, get your imagination flowing a little bit. Um, we're going to be talking about the long tail and looking at uh, um, how things have evolved and created new markets. And so, uh, this we're talking about the implications for the technology. You know, looking beyond the lens of what came before it. So. Um, Anyway, what I want, we're taking into account conversations that we'll have here, information gathered independently and course materials discuss implications for the publishing industry and libraries of ebooks that are distributed and consumed on the iPad and how it uh, potentially could uh, um, enable folks to become their own publishers and what kind of explosion of information that would be. So, you know, um, that's kind of the 
the idea going with that, but I don't want to limit you too much. I would like to see where everybody's uh, um, coming from on this and how is this different from desktop publishing? How in really this is desktop distribution as well as publishing and how might that empower people to do everything from genealogy to, um, to basically their own publications? Does anyone have any questions about the papers? Yeah, go right ahead, Callie. Go right ahead, Callie. Okay, looks like oh, okay, yeah, go go right ahead, Callie. Okay, I think I got it now. Now the first paper, is that specifically about electronic books and textbooks that work with uh iPhone and iTunes uh content ecosystem? Yes. The second paper will not be limited to just uh, um, the, I, the iOS devices, but also looking at it as, a, um, as an information infrastructure. So yes, we'll be working with the iPad, but also talking about um, you know, the whole concept of EPUBs. Because in essence, when you create uh, a book in the EPUB format, it can be distributed in a lot of different devices, um, and that's it. Opens up a whole new way of publishing. Now, one thing we haven't talked too much is about you know. It seems like we've been talking about text, but it seems like things are really moving towards video now, and documentaries and stuff like that. I totally agree with that, um, and it's interesting because you know you you look at uh, um, the ability for people to create all kinds of dynamic content. They're not limited to paper anymore. Um, and the neat thing is, is the tools that are available to do that are not just in the hands of publishing companies or magazines or newspapers. Uh, these tools are basically tools that everybody owns, and so. You know the ability to shoot a family video and do a genealogy book that might incorporate that video in it, and maybe take a movie that was shot on somebody's 16 millimeter camera back in the 1940s and incorporate that into some kind of dynamic publication is really kind of mind-boggling. Kelly, what were you looking at doing differently? Well, I think one, I'm thinking of you know handheld PCs in general, and also just digital. Uh, like he was talking about digital publishing in, in general, it's tricky to you know narrow it down to the iPhone and the iPad because it seems like they're so tied together. But uh, one area that I think is interesting that we haven't talked about when it comes to videos and stuff is is battery power, and I, I think that's going to be. I think that's going to be interesting to read and see how that does when you start wanting to you know have your little handhelds be projectors for you. Yeah, and I think that actually goes back to the Flash versus HTML5 debate because that is one of the big uh, arguments that Steve Jobs has used in um, not having these devices support Flash. I'm seeing a small error here, but uh, I think we're good. One resource type and one to two resource types. I think that's probably reversed. Um, so. Does this look doable? Does this look? Um, is it going to be useful for you? And uh, do you feel like um, it's a it's a fair uh, uh, judgment of of uh, you know? Is it growth? If you do this stuff, are you going to grow? And if you get the grade, is that, is that going to be fair? I don't want anybody to be surprised when they get a grade. That that's the key thing. Um, uh, I also want everybody to have the maximum opportunity to to, to go out and do really creative stuff because you, you're all very talented people. Um, so 
uh, the first paper, 15 points, do um, what I said, September the 15th at Soma Syllabus. The second paper also worth uh, 15 points due on October the 13th. The first paper focuses specifically on the iPhone and iTunes uh, content ecosystem. And I believe that Steve is uh, looking, are you looking specifically at eBooks? Yeah, that's correct. Um, ultimately, I want people to cons consider the implications for eBooks and also pr to produce an eBook that uh, everybody will have come through this class and they actually will have done an ebook. Any other questions on the papers? These, yeah, go ahead. Um, can I ask a, just like a random question and it has no um, intonation either way, but why papers? It seems kind of ironic. Um, propose something else. How can you say no intonation, no intonation either way, and then it's ironic? <laughs> if you know, if, if I guess this is this is sort of a minimalist. Kind of assignment. I mean, it's the it's the soup starter. I mean, it's the bare bones. I mean, you know, if if, if you want to shoot a photo essay on the topic, that's great. Um, this is uh, an opportunity and an impetus to go out there and grab uh, uh, to do a, a, a literature review, to look at the field, to look at what's happening out there, what people are writing about it. But you know, I, we're we're very flexible. I want to echo what Jeremy said. Um, you know, the whole point of a paper is to be able to go out and, and gather information, synthesize ideas, and to present concepts. If you have another way of doing that, um, yeah, go for it. Go ahead, Kelly. Go ahead, Kelly. Do you, do you have anything to say? I was just dabbing away, but my mic, my mic wasn't on. <laughs> uh, I'm interested in the difference between iTunes and YouTube as far as a delivery mechanism for video, because it seems like uh, for embedding videos, YouTube seems pretty friendly, and, it, and I like its compression and stuff. But I'm wondering, you know, how, whether I can be allowed to compare and contrast with that. As long as you can go out and grab five, five uh, uh, pieces of writing or pieces of content and uh, describe them and, and uh, um, you know, follow the rubric, you're fine. Yeah, Silka, I'd love to see that. So I'm just looking for, you know, 750 to 1,000 words of uh, uh, equivalent content. Yeah, go right ahead. I just thought the idea of that keynote, I did a presentation with a voice overlay for another class this past semester, and I had an absolute blast. So I'm just saying it will probably not be 750 words, but what if we or whoever wants to just made a nice slideshow and maybe talked about the sources they found um, and maybe add the text instead of just presenting a bland paper and then, okay, maybe the second paper will be a bland paper or we come up with something else. So we have the best of both worlds. I don't, you know, I honestly, I don't see the difference between um, this assignment and what you're describing. I mean, if you can, uh, create 750 to 1,000 words of content, roughly, um, in any mode uh, that describes five resources or uh, information pieces about this topic, that's great. Uh, that's a paper. I'm not asking for something with, you know, I'm not saying, you know, an inch and a half margin on each side and da 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 da. That's it's not the point. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, Emory. But I want to give you a grade and I want to be fair to everybody. So, you know, five things, at least five things, you're describing it, you're, you're uh, um, 
you're describing the quality and the depth of the thing, and you're doing it in roughly 750 to 1,000 words. The projects. Um, we have two projects. Uh, they are worth um, 20 points each, 40 points total. And uh, these guys are due on the 29th of September, the first project. My project is due September the 29th. And Steve's project is due uh, October the 27th. These are very simple, pretty straightforward. Um, the first project is to work through the first three chapters of the book, the uh, start book, and take content from a website of your choosing and do the same thing with them. And that's it. Um, uh, and there are uh, some guidelines there in terms of how much of a website to, to, to work with. Um, Steve, do you want to talk about, about uh, your project? Sure, do a book and te hopefully tell a story with the book. Um, there's going to, you know, 10 points, 20 points, 10 points is basically it works as an ebook. Um, be able to be uploaded into the ebook application, et cetera, um, and account for applicable DRM issues. In other words, the content either is content that you yourself has created or you've gone out and, uh, um, and used stuff that's in the public domain, um, Creative Commons information, et cetera. Uh, the 20 points we're talking about, basic minimums. Two chapters, three photos, front matter, in matter, table of contents, um, and also, like I say, look at a book. You've got a book that tells a story. Uh, typically, it has a beginning and an end if you're talking about a novel, or it takes you from um, a, a certain level of competency to a higher level of competency if you're looking at technical publications, et cetera. But in essence, um, that project is to create a book that will work on an iPad as well as other devices. Does that answer the question? I'm curious about uh, if you have a, a preference for the process by which we uh, create an EPUB. I mean, I know that it's it's very easy to take text content and use a program like Caliber or something like that to just create an EPUB uh, file. But are you interested in us like um, hand coding EPUB uh, markup or? Hey, if you want to hand code um, and you feel comfortable. Uh, um, you know, hacking um, XHTML, then go for it. Um, I'm presenting folks with Siegel as a basic WYSIWYG tool, and uh, um, it's free, it's open source, et cetera, it's cross platform. So that's kind of the bottom line. But I mean, there are other tools you can use. You can create EPUBs out of Word, you can create them out of uh, um, InDesign CS5. Uh, ultimately, I want to see an EPUB. Um, the, uh, first, the first assignment is to show that you have access to the tools, but um, ultimately what you output your project in doesn't matter, but as long as it works. That's really, I mean, a consumer doesn't care what a book was created in or whether a person used uh, um, Quark or InDesign to create a, a book or a magazine. It's what works. So these are, again, these are soup starters. We've got, um, some people might find this stuff really, really complicated. Some, you know, we don't want to overwhelm folks, and it is a two-credit course. On the other hand, you know, these are pretty straightforward beginning points. You can take an existing web um, uh, page and create, um, uh, you know, an, uh, it looks like almost like a web app on the device. And you can create content text and put it in the iBook store or read it uh, in one of the other stanza, one of the other ebook readers, and um, it looks like an ebook. Once you have those things, so what, what, what we've given you here with a two credit uh, course is access to all of your, your, your fellow experts. You guys have some amazing backgrounds here. Um, and you'll walk away with a web page formatted um, properly for uh, a mobile device and an EPUB formatted properly for a mobile device based upon content that you start with. Um, so I think that's, you know, it's, it's only two credits. 
Um, we only have two thirds of the term to work through, um, but I think you'll you'll come away with a lot of nice uh, portfolio pieces and some some interesting interaction, as well as the papers and looking at the implications of the stuff up front. Yeah, a little more on that. Uh, in terms, Siegel is really it's kind of got its quirks, but once you understand them. It is very simple to use, and that's why I mean, I've created an ebook using Siegel. And you know, I was racking my brain trying to work with InDesign CS5, even though I teach InDesign and I love InDesign. Um, it's a very different metaphor than PDF, which InDesign does very well. So Siegel seems to be a very nice little tool. But that doesn't mean that you're stuck with that. But you will have something coming out of this class. You will be able to say, I have created an ebook. Does anybody have any other questions about the projects? Okay, so we're having some great conversations here in Illuminate Live. And um, you all are familiar, obviously, with doing uh, uh, forums uh, discussions. I tweak mine a little bit, uh, uh, the discussions, to have leaders. Um, so the forum participation, 10 points in the first seminar, 10 points in the second seminar. Um, and I have a discussion uh, rubric. It's kind of blurry here, but gives you, a, gives you an idea of how to uh, earn the points. The first four are what you do if you're participating in the seminar, and the last one is what you do if you are leading the seminar. I've split you guys up into two groups, um, seminar leaders uh, for seminar one and seminar leaders for seminar two. Um, so for instance, uh, Callie is a leader in seminar two, so in the first Round the first seminar, she'll be um, following the rubric in points one through four. So she'll be um, doing all of the regular participation you would in a in a in a, in a regular online class in a discussion forum. Then in uh, seminar two, she steps it up and takes on this this role of leading the discussion by posting questions. So you, you take a, it's a different flavor of interaction in the forum. So this is the uh, teams by students, and I have this list in the, I'm pretty sure I have this list in the Angel uh, group. So starting out, uh, leaders are uh, Miguel, Kent, Luana, Frank, Kate, Silka. And then next, in the next seminar, the leaders will be Callie, Jesse, and like that. So um, it's a little bit different way to, to run discussion forums, and it means that some people are going to be um, adding more questions than they typically would. Steve and I are going to be in there and uh, working alongside the leaders as well. Anybody have any questions about the, the uh, participation piece? Yeah, that flew over me like a 747. Um, is that in order, or will there be a date for each of us? I really didn't get that, sorry. Well, that's fine. I'm getting, I'm getting a little tired. Um, uh, so there are two seminars in the course, and maybe, maybe it would be better to go to the schedule first, and then that will make more sense. Um, let's come back to that. Because without seeing the schedule, I think it's difficult to see uh, what you guys are going to be doing. So, um, so don't don't let me forget that. The presentations. Uh, it's a very important question. Uh, the presentation at the end is your opportunity to come back in to illuminate and to tell your classmates uh, um, a, to synthesize what you've done and what you've learned in the course. So, are any of you involved in the ePortfolio right now? Are any of you uh, taking 298 currently? Oh, I'm sorry, 289. If you're taking 289, you're, you're already sort of working on this stuff. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, soon, if you're not doing a dissertation, most people do not do a dissertation in the program, you'll be doing an e-portfolio, which means that you are going to have to go and, uh, uh, oh, well, there you go, Paul, this is perfect. Um, take those three competencies in the syllabus and find 
evidence in this course that you've mastered them. So basically, oh perfect, basically you're going to take the learning and the products of this course and annotate them in, in the very similar way that you would for the portfolio. And instead of writing it out, you're going to tell us. So that's a 10 minute presentation. Uh, and let me go to the schedule here. So I probably should have had this earlier in the presentation. Sorry about that. So right now we are in the orientation phase this week through uh, September the 1st. And you're doing your introductions, uh, we're having discussion, we're working through logistics. Then the seminar, the first seminar opens on September the 1st and goes through September the 29th. Now Callie, this is, or I'm sorry, Silka, this is where leaders for the seminar will be um, communicating in a slightly different way than their peers. So the rubric, which is in the the course, the, the sort of the descriptions of, of how we're going to be giving dis discussion grades, it's a little bit different for some of you for that first term, that first seminar. So the folks who are doing discussions, leaders are going to be encouraged to do more, take charge more, do questioning, uh, synthesize more. And the folks who are participating do your typical kind of um, interactions in the forums. And then you trade places. So everybody who was a leader in that first seminar now steps back and the other folks get to step on and do leading. So individual people are leading for sort of like this isn't uh, Callie's week or this isn't Silka's week. You guys are working as a team, you're working in a group to be leaders. Yeah. It's a way, it's a sort of social engineering. It's a way to uh, sort of uh, change it up a little bit and give you a different experience. And I found it to be very powerful, especially when we have folks as talented as you guys. Um, uh, mid-career folks who have a lot to bring to the course and uh, even willing to teach some of it as you did uh, with the, what we were talking about the genealogy lesson. So um, Steve, do you, do you want to talk a little bit about um, any of this before I go into the sort of just step by step down the pieces? Well, you know, it's easy for me to say, yeah, what you said. Um, I'm kind of following your lead on this one since, you know, previously I come from journalism and things are done differently than they are in SLUS. So, um, yeah, basically what Jeremy said, and we're going to apply it to what we're going to be doing when we get into eBooks. Yeah, you can see these, these are highly parallel. Um, groups, the web, the web app seminar and then the ebooks uh, seminar. They're nearly identical in terms of the flow. So there's um, um, uh, a lecture on implications and then the papers due on the 15th, pretty quick. We have a speaker the night of the 15th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, then a lecture, some content on applications from the 15th to the 29th and then the project. So that and that flow is identical for the for the ebook seminar as well. And then you can see here the um, presentations, student presentations, dates and times are not set. I want to get I want to get closer to that um, period so that we can be sure there's no conflicts. Um, this is kind of nerve wracking for students, but um, folks who've had me even before know that um, you know. You, We'll set up the, the, the times for the presentations a week or two before and everybody will, will get a time that will not be inconvenient for them. So everybody gets a time that's convenient. Because I know that most of you, um, well anyway, will be doing a lot of surveying and, and get you a time that works for everyone. So don't worry about that so much. These presentations are the ePortfolio presentations. So does anybody have any questions about the schedule? Okay, I want to tell you about, uh, this is kind of an oddball thing. Um, we wanted to have everybody check in and do an introduction with themselves by taking a screenshot of information about themselves in a variety of, of uh, applications. So in other words, I have, um, we want you to 
to show us that you have um, SIGIL, S-I-G-I-L, the uh, EPUB uh, creator, and we want us to want you to show us that you have a, a web editor. And uh, we we propose uh, Composer, K-O-N-P-O-Z-E-R. It's in the it's in the course. And also, finally, that you have access to um, the iPad simulator or the iPad itself. So we, we'd like to get um, three screenshots for you um, by September 1st. So we, we, we want to get um, screenshots of those three interfaces with information. I, I like to, uh, it's fun to put some, some um, you know, regular kind of, you guys have already started it actually in the, in, in the, uh, in the discussion area, talking about yourself. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing in the program. Take that information and put it in those interfaces. And that doesn't mean that you need to know how to do an ebook. That just means that you have SIGL and you've pasted some text into it. We just want to see the, the, uh, the interface itself, screenshots of a web editor, SIGL, and the iPad and or the iPad uh, simulator to show that you have those. It's just a tools check. We're just getting everybody up to speed. Everybody's got the tools. They're ready to go by September 1st at noon. So the way you do that is to download. You've got to download those guys. Um, and they're all free. Um, put them on your machine. Uh, in the case of the iPad simulator, if you have the iPad, you don't need the iPad simulator. If you have the iPad itself, you can just take a screenshot of the iPad using, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, uh, this method. Let me start up. Um, have you guys seen this? So this is my, uh, my iPad. And so I've got I've got the uh, Flickr loaded. I don't know whose it is. Okay, so in order to take a screenshot of the iPad, I press two buttons at the same time. I press the round button uh, right here. And I press the button at the top right here at the same time. So you'll see the screen flicker. And here, this is what it sounds like. So then I would take that image, which it goes to my photos area, and send an email to myself. Uh, and then take that email, take the image out of that email, and put it in the, in the forum, in the discussion forum. So that's all kind of convoluted and, and confusing. Essentially what it comes down to is we want to make sure that you have the software needed and um, show that software in the forum using screenshots. That's the, the kind of the two key pieces. Does that make sense? So it's just a matter of downloading the stuff. Um, putting some, some personal identif identifying information about yourself, some uh, intro about yourself in those platforms, take uh, screenshots and have fun with it. Post them up into the discussion area. Um, the instructions right now are pretty darn uh, uh, light. I apologize about that. But um, if you need help with that, uh, feel free to give an email to me or Paul or uh, uh, Steve. And um, I, I'm available by cell phone as well. So that's the timeline for the course, and we talked about uh, who we are, some really amazing people. Uh, that doesn't sound too good. <laughs> I guess I'm really impressed by all of you. And uh, uh, we've got some very interesting uh, uh, stuff ahead of us. We've got um, uh, uh, a really nicely, tightly designed course um, in two seminars, uh, and we have discussion leaders for each of these seminars. Um, we're doing two papers, two projects, the ePortfolio at the end. But for right now, go ahead and get started downloading the software, um, grabbing the screenshots, and putting, up, putting them up into the discussion area.
probably now, um, Steve, do you have anything you want to add? No, oh, I, I think you explained it very well. We just want to be sure that uh, we don't get down the road and then somebody come up and say, gee, I'm having problems with the, uh, um, with the tools working. So if for some reason you run into that problem, you know, get in touch with uh, um, Jeremy or I. Um, we want to be as accessible as possible so that we can be here to uh, address any concerns you have before you start getting into um, any kind of production schedule. This is, we have so few people here. Why don't we go down uh, one by one and just hear a quick, um, do you have any feedback, uh, any, anything that needs to be clarified? Are you all good? Or what are you looking forward to? Just a quick statement and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. So Anne-Marie, take it away. I'm looking forward to like synthesizing all this information from tonight. Um, I need, I'm having a filter failure situation right now. What was that, Anne? I said I was looking forward to uh, filtering and digesting this material from tonight. I'm having a, a filter failure situation or information overload. Yeah, I think these projects sound interesting. It'll be fun to hear, see what everybody does with them. Well, I'm uh, right now properly terrified about being uh, one of the first seminar leaders, but uh, I'm sure everything will work out, and I'm very much looking forward to playing with the tools for this course. We didn't hear that, Luana. Oh, bummer. Okay. Do you want to chat uh, in text? Yeah, I'm. Uh, this is Paul. I'm, I'm just interested in getting uh, acquainted with all the tools and uh, and getting a little bit more into this uh, uh, into this realm and seeing what's out there and what the uh, what the possibilities are. Um, I have similar interests. I'm also interested in getting that first application um, on the simulator running um, and. I don't have any questions about the course, I think, at all. It seems to make sense to me, at least for now. I'm really happy about all of this. It doesn't sound even half as scary as I thought it would be. I spent all day today um, downloading all the tools, and I did all those uh, snapshots and whatnot, so I'm just going to post them now and see if what I did is what you'd like. Come and check it out. This is wonderful. I, I really, I really, uh, uh, you know, Steve's taught. I think you've taught undergrads, right? So it's 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 a whole different experience to work with people that you know really at the top of their game and doing some amazing stuff. And and really, uh, it, it's uh, it's such an honor. So thank you so much. And and um, keep us honest. Uh, if if anything doesn't look right or if it's missing or you know whatever you need. Um, email and call. Best way to start out if you have an issue is to start with the Help Me forum. Uh, that's very useful. A lot of times folks will watch that. Um, be sure to uh, subscribe to it too in the community. Com communicate that. So in other words, if you have a problem, there's a forum. It's called Help Me. Um, use that first. Uh, the next line, now Steve does uh, um, help, help uh, desk. So to escalate that, send an email to us. Um, and to escalate that, um, um, call on cell. And Steve actually does text as well. So there's a way to get help. Um, don't feel like uh, you, you, you're not, you know, like you're frustrated or you're stopped. Send an email. Um, I can, Silka, if, if, uh, if I'm here generally 9 to 6, um, but give a call because I don't always come down to campus.
Okay, that is 90 minutes, and um, I hope you're not exa as exhausted as I am, but um, it's great to see uh, the course come together and see all of you come in, and um, uh, I think we're going to have a great uh, two credits. And uh, I'm going to send, hopefully I'll send this out for uh, transcription. We'll have that and hopefully put it up on uh, uh, YouTube as well. I like to put these up on YouTube. Um, and tag it with hash iPad287. Then we will see you again on September the 15th, 6 to 7.30 p.m., where we will have a speaker um, as yet undetermined. Um, but we've got some good leads. So um, we'll see you then.